you know, born and raised in New Orleans, first and foremost. But there's a part of New Orleans that also it's a lot of light, which is it being a murder capital, high crime, right? A lot of poor, a lot of underdeveloped people um, financially coming up in that. Everybody you see is in survival mode. Nobody is thriving but the drug dealers, the rappers, and the people that play sports. Yeah, that's it. If you can't play sports, or if you can't make it rapping, then all the power is now in the drug dealers mm -hmm. or in the criminals, right? You see them living the life they want. And everybody that you see going to work, they barely making it, right? You know people with two jobs. Mm -hmm. You know people with three jobs. And all you see them doing is coming home whooped. They still struggling. So you like, I'm not about to do that. If I'm going to live a life, at least let me have some fun. Mm -hmm. At least let me do some of the things I want to do. I have this thing that I say that like, if you take a picture and you put it in a darkness, this is where it develops at. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And the darkness is where it develops. You don't want to expose it too early because it'll mess up. But in the darkness is where it develops. And when it's time, when you know just right, it can be one of the most beautiful pictures you've ever seen mm -hmm. if you let it develop in the right time. Prison was my development stage. So I'm, I'm, I get in a cell with this white guy. So he said, listen, you gotta do these three things. You gotta start trading time for money. You gotta start learning how to make your money work for you. You gotta learn how to give value to people. I didn't learn that message. The value part, I didn't learn that until I started my business. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I had never heard nothing. Like, that was like scripture to me hearing yeah, that, yeah. right? Learn how to make your money work for you. Stop trading time for money and give value to people. He just started explaining to me yeah. about how wealthy people use money and how the streets is a game that we can never win. Mm. We were only pawns yeah. in the game. The house always wins. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was <laughs> like, damn. So he just started making me realizing that. And so I think in that moment, I just started looking at everybody from my mama. I was like, damn, I don't know nobody that won. Everybody had moments, but nobody really won. Yeah. And so maybe before he left, he told me, wealthy people invest in stocks, mm -hmm. they invest in start a business, and then they invest in real estate. So that's just kind of like, that was my moment. And so I would watch CNBC, and I, I couldn't get it, because I couldn't understand it. I couldn't, they were speaking it in a language that was just, like, I ain't never heard that before. And I never forget, they was talking about tariffs and what they are. And tariffs were simply taxes that other countries pay for coming, you know, hustle in the United States. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I said, well, that's the equivalent to paying draft. So a draft is like, let's say you live in one hood, I live in one hood, you want to come hustle over here? I said, Louis, you got to pay me some money to come over here. That's a tariff. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, oh, this reminds me of the streets. And then, like, it just started clicking to me. It mm -hmm. reminded me literally of the streets. Like, in order for a company to be great on the stock market, they have to have a good product. In order for me a good hustler, I got to have a good product. In the streets, if I can be a great hustler, I have to know how to turn my revenues into profit. I got to have more than re-up money. It has to be money that I can re-up with and then go get some to more get and more pay my bills. Yeah. yeah. You have to learn that. And the, on the stock market, if a company has a good moat, a competitive advantage, they can beat off their defenders. Well, if I'm a hustler, if I got a good product, if I got a good price, I got good packaging, if I'm always out there, if I'm always available, yeah. I got a moat. And so I was like, yo, this remind me of the streets. Mm -hmm. It's no different. And so once I was able to make that connection, in my mind, I said, I could be the next Warren Buffett. Wow. Like, I could be the next Warren Buffett. So everything was me just learning. So studying Monash Pabrai, studying Warren Buffett, studying Bill Ackman, studying just so many different people, Peter Lynch, just studying them, understanding them, Joel Greenblatt, just studying them, listening to them, like getting my people, man, send me some books, uh, getting somebody I know, like, yo, man, tell your people, send me these books, I'm gonna pay you for it from the commissary. And so I would just read, 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 read. I had nothing else to do. I would get consumed in it because immediately I saw that there were two different Americas. There was the America that I knew and that 
everybody around me had the same problem. There was a there was a particular thread that ran through every hood across America. And then we always look at another part of America and we'd be like, yo, how do they get that? And I was like, the reason why in my mind was because they have access to a different type of information. Mm -hmm. People like to talk about racism a lot. And while it does exist, I think classism is a completely different animal. Classism says, this is how our family is set up. Your father says, listen, you need to learn how to invest. You need to learn how to start a business. But also, I want you to meet so-and-so's son. Mm -hmm. I want you to meet so-and-so's brother. I want you to meet so-and-so's daughter. I want you to go to this school. I want you to go to this party with me. And so information gets passed down. Life insurance get passed down. Wills, trust get passed down. Those type of things help you get access to room that me or these people over mm -hmm. here Don't will never too. see. The information mm -hmm. is what changes everything. Right. And so I had this saying, education and information changes the conversation. Mm -hmm. If you change the conversation, you can change the compensation. Mm -hmm. If you can change the compensation, you can change the realization. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. It's because if I can get access to information, just something simple as investing. When I started teaching my homies about investing, I was like, yo, in order to be wealthy, you gotta own something. You can't, you can't be a, you cannot create wealth if you don't own nothing. If you don't own nothing, you're just a consumer. And if you don't own nothing and you're a consumer and you don't teach your kids how to own nothing, then now you've let them inherit it being a consumer. Yeah. I'm a hustler. But it's just in me. Yeah. But I never went back to the streets. That's when I started taking this serious. 2014, I said. Man, you playing the wrong game, bro. We wear Nikes all the time. We should own Nike. Should own stock in Nike. We should own stock in yeah. Nike. All us got Apple, iPhones. Just in the beginning, mm. we should own oh, iPhones. Yeah. I'm like, yo, like we wear Dickies and Timberlands. That's owned by a company called VFC Corp. We can own that. And so I started preaching it to my homies. Mm. And that's when financial literacy really changed my life. Because at this point, I was dedicated to like, I knew that the streets wasn't for me no more. Like I hadn't already been through all the phases. I did the 10 years in prison. I got found not guilty. My life had been on the line several times. True. I'm still here. I was like, yo, like God got something different for me. Wow. From that, okay, I looked at myself like I'm the person who can teach them because just being real, if somebody go to them street dudes with a suit and tie, they're not gonna feel that. You yeah. ain't been through what I've been through. So now I wanted to represent something different. I want to represent Wall Street in a way that I'm going to wear my hoodie, I'm going to wear my teen tops, I'm going to wear my tennis shoes, but I got the same information. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can help you change your life. I can teach you the game that they playing. If you wouldn't learn it, it reminds you of the game. And so that's when my life shifted, when I started taking this serious and I started saying, I'm going to be the first person in my family to build wealth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the first person in my family to have a trust. I'm going to be the first person in my family to own land. And I'm going to teach a bunch of dope dealers how to do the same thing. Mm. But then my mission got bigger because I realized it wasn't just a dope dealer. It was people that was working nine to fives every day that still didn't see a way out. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna teach them too. All right, let me, just, let me just start educating my people. Let me start educating this class right. of people. You know what I'm saying? Because now if we can get this information, now we can start saying both is possible. The reason why the elitists can't teach financial literacy to certain people is because then they lose customers. Mm. A lot of wealthy people can't teach financial literacy to poor people because those are the biggest customers. Who else will be the consumers? Mm. Why would I teach you how to be a financial predator? Financial predators need financial prey. Mm. And so once I understood that, I was like, I get it. I get it. Right. This, this is the game changer.
I look at it as so every investor has what's called an investor identity, like what you're willing to risk, your risk tolerance, what companies you're more familiar with. If you're a doctor, then you know more about medicine. So you should be in biotech or pharmaceuticals, healthcare. You should that should be your thing. That's where your strong points are.